And it is now our pleasure to bring in Pro Football Hall of Famer, NFL MVP, Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl MVP. Stop, stop. And he was okay at BYU, too. And he's an author. Let's throw that in, too. Steve Young is with us, joining us over Zoom. Steve, great to have you back on the show. How are things? I love I love my mom's version of the introduction. That's very good. <laughs> you know, it's like extensive. It like covers all the big points. And may the fourth be with all everybody. You know, I I, had, I came to it late. My kids <laughs> love Star Wars. Love. I mean, like watch it. You know, over and over and over. And I had to I had to be honest with them. I was like, because they're like, Dad, you are. Did you go to? Did you line up around the theater? Like you. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't. Maybe for Indiana Jones, but not for Star Wars. But I'm a, I'm a latecomer to it. But I do, I have uh, cre- uh, developed the appreciation for all things Star Wars. So I'm in. Wait, so f- your senior year, fall of 83, you aren't watching Return of the Jedi in theaters? This isn't taking over Provo? I know, it's crazy. It's insanity. <laughs> How could I miss? I was probably watching Rocky <laughs> 3, you know, like... <laughs> I, 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 my, my, my sense of art was a little bit diminished in the old days. I've grown. I've matured. Steve Young with us on BYU Sports Nation in his matured fashion. And speaking of which, <laughs> Steve, okay, so with the Star Wars conversation out of the way, we'll get to the name image like this, Mattis, in just a moment. But I know there are a lot of BYU fans and BYU football coaches that are clamoring for Steve Young to show up at next year's alumni game. Is that a pipe dream or would that happen? Well, the sad thing is, I didn't know anything about it. I read about oh. it afterwards, and I thought to myself, How? I was so offended. <laughs> right? It's like, are you telling me that you think that I can't play? <laughs> like, you, like, who makes the invitations, and who do I need to go after, and who do I need to go see right now and <laughs> strangle, you know? For, for the lack of respect, uh, and so I'm not over it right now. So I'm not sure what the next – I might have to boycott now because they, they, they disrespected me. I'm not sure where to go with this. But I can guarantee you, I don't, who played and what did it look like? It just looked like, you know, ridiculous. I, I, I'm playing next year. I mean, if, I don't care if they try to ban – you know, try to boycott me again. I mean, I'm playing. You're so doing I'll be it. there. I'll be like that. I'll come in with the shorts and the high socks. I'm ready to go. <laughs> and a so. mesh jersey, just slinging it. <laughs> <The> mesh. <laughs> but but yeah, you have to play your OG. Uh, mesh. You have to play your OG position, safety. You may have to play both sides. Oh well, yeah, three three weeks of safety with Tom Homo in the back house of the <laughs> Smith Field House. That was the that was the low point of my athletic career, right there. <laughs> Tom, Tom was like, you don't seem like you're really enjoying this. I'm like, Tom, this is not a no one play safety. <laughs> Tom, this is not how the LA Express are going to pick me up, okay? This is not yeah, how it's going right. to go. This is not a, yeah. I, know, I have a better chance at, the, at law school than I do <laughs> playing for the plane safety. All right, Steve, now we transition to the wild, wild west of college football with name, image, and likeness. It's modern-day free agency, it feels like, within college sports. What do you think of currently an ungoverned situation and how it's impacting college sports? Is it enhancing it or is it ruining it? Uh, well, it depends on where you're standing from. If you're a young you know, high school athlete and now all of a sudden you're putting hundreds of thousands of dollars in your pocket, maybe millions, uh, you know, that's, a, 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 oh, that's terrible. Don't, <laughs> I, we don't want that to happen. But the problem is, as you guys have pointed out immediately, is the Wild West is, Think about the Wild West. It was without regulation. It was without plan. It was just this thing got dropped on the on the NCA and dropped on college athletics, and it's exploded. And there's no there's no functioning group that can come in and give it, you know, uh, clarity. Uh, the NCA, I, I think, is incapable of doing it. I think if you sue the NCA today, you're almost guaranteed a victory. So I do not believe the NCA is is the is the group that can come in and tame what is the Wild West, right? To give it governance and give it structure and give it a plan. What does it look like in the future? And if you could, you told me four or five years ago that the NCA would be essentially neutered from this kind of a conversation, we'd all be like, "Oh my gosh, where are we? Where are we going to go?" So, you know, with that in mind, okay, who else can come in? over the top 
uh, and try to create something that would be useful, and that's Congress. And I just, I don't think they'll do it. My, that's my, you could, people can hope that Congress comes and acts and creates an environment where we can try to figure out what an student, a student athlete is. But I just, I don't believe that that's going to happen. So if I'm right, what you have is the people who are going to decide it are the people with all the marbles. And who has all the marbles today? That's the commissioner of the SEC. Yeah. And, and the television, right? And they'll, and what will they, what, how will they think about it? They'll think about it as there's an elite group of schools that will collect and the television will say, look, I need these 50 schools. And then those 50 schools are in and they'll figure out how to divvy it up and they'll figure out how to do it. And then, you know, and they'll, uh, and that's football and basketball kind of maybe creates the same kind of environment. And then, you know, then everyone else. And everyone else is going to be just what you can fund, you know. And then you're think about the NILs today, and where like all of the money that used to pour into athletic departments to try to create a, a budget surplus or at least break even, so they could have forty sports. We used to come from all the alumni and all the donors, so that so you had a racquetball team and a you know you know I'm, I'm overdoing it there, but I mean just saying like. Uh, women's um, uh, lacrosse or, you know, you know, we had a lot of sports out there, men's wrestling. There's a lot of sports that don't make any money. They cost BYU, they cost all schools money. And how do they fund it? They fund it from football. They fund it from donors. Now, all of a sudden, that money is now dried up and gone. It's other places. Yeah, interesting. It's, yep. the, it's, the, it's, the sign, it's the sign the next quarterback, right? It's all, look at the $40 million budget that Texas A&M has for football. It's wild. $40 million to pay guys to come play. They used to have be used to be zero. Now it's 40 and all that money is, where's that money draining from? And that's, you know, that sound you hear draining from all the other sports that aren't, you know, don't have the fun, don't have the funding, don't have the, 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 uh, the budget. So what happens if I'm right, that, all the guys, the TV, TV, and the SEC figure out who the friends are to take all the money. All the money in the college system is going to go to football and basketball, and to those few teams. And all the other money is going to be drained from it. And then how do you, what do you have left? I, I, I have no idea. And you say, well, that can't happen. That's impossible. No one will let that happen. I, I just don't. I mean, I, I had long conversation with a Power Five men's basketball head coach the other day and he feels like um college athletics is dead mm. when it comes to other sports than basketball and football there will not be because or there'll be and the in the, the, the college football environment will be like alabama you'll go play for alabama you get paid you don't go to school you'll just be a employee of alabama and that's how that'll go, that'll go down. Yeah. And so the idea, that, and then you figure like a Stanford or a BYU or you know those that you know those schools that are just going to have a lot of integrity around what the system should look like, they're going to try to figure out another way to do it, and they'll just have to go fund it themselves and try to create an environment where they can go compete with each other. And I'm not talking about football. Football's different, but all the other sports, they're going to have to figure out a new way forward in an unfunded new funding to go be able to play college sports. Okay. We've got three minutes left, Steve. Wanted to get your uh, take on Tyler Algier to the Falcons. What do you think oh, of that? Wait, you have no, you're going to say, just let that go. Like I just told you, that, <laughs> like that's, that's madness. It is. It, mad. it is no, madness. And, and hopefully BYU will be included on the in crowd. That's a concern we've had is K. Okay, if there's separation, will BYU be included there? It'll be, you know, we'll be on the bubble, right? We've always been on the bubble. So we'll just, you know, we got, but you know, look, one of the, 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 college, the, the head coach that I talked to last week said BYU on NILs really progressive, really figured it out. Yeah. Leading the way, yep. giving people. A, so in that way, the more we lead, the more we have an opportunity to make sure that we're part of whatever conversation needs to happen. So I give Tom and, and Kalani and everybody credit for what they've done with them. What in the wild west to create some, you know, a leadership role in the, in the wild west. 
And certainly this NIL business is going to have an impact. It's already having an impact on the transfer portal, which is a whole other topic, Steve. Uh, maybe they're so intertwined that it's just kind of one big subject, but the transfer portal also greatly impacting the future of college sports. Do you like what's happening there? Do you feel like guys should be able to go where they want to go more often? The problem is, is that we're trying to create an environment for students, you know, student athletes to get through college, right? That's how it's supposed to be. Like get a degree graduates. We want degrees. We want people educated. Like the whole point was, and I think that you can see that with the portal just adds another layer away from the, you know, kind of the student athlete to more to the professionalized free agency and kind of, you know, semi pro league that college football will become is, is now. That's what I kept saying about the, this, this head coach. I'm like, you know, yeah. What do you think? Like, no, it's happening now. And so the idea that, you know, that we're going to hold on to this glamorous idea of ideal of student athlete is it's dead. That's I, I, that's what he said. I tend to agree. And so the portal just makes it that much more mm -hmm. of, you know, it, it's the NFL and, and it's the NBA and just a different, different guys, different ways to think about it, but that's what it is. And the idea that it's now uh, disconnected from, you know, school, you know, scholar scholarship is, is a fact. So I think you, soon it'll just become a complete, this association from school you won't you won't play for you know byu going to school we'll force it you know because that's we'll have the integrity to do it but most schools will just say look just you're an employee of the school through the portal we'll take our best we'll take our best 50 guys this year through the portal and, and otherwise we'll, who we recruit just like just like in the nfl we we draft some guys we get some free agents we put them all together we throw them together with a you know, with a budget and off we go and we try to go win a Super Bowl. And then they, we blow it all up and we do it again next year. It's exactly what's happening in college football. So just look at the NFL. It won't be nearly as structured as the NFL, but it's the same thing. Steve, I wish we could talk for like an hour or longer, but we're being told that we've got 30 seconds left. So I do want to take this time to promote your new book, the law of love. Yeah. Okay. We all need some solace in this wild, wild west chaos sports world. Let's find some solace in, solace in your book. Yeah. Let's be very clear. I did not come on and trade for you to promote <laughs> this. Like, this true. came no. out of nowhere. No, no. <laughs> so I, I know it, it sounds crazy, but it's my way forward uh, in my kind of religious life. And I really, I, I, Find, I found it very, very engaging for me, and, I, and I'm hoping that other people find it equally engaging on the way forward. It's, it's my way forward, and, I, and I, it's very, very meaningful to me, and I appreciate you mentioning it. Hey, you got it. Uh, we're going to have you back on again soon because we need to discuss Zach Wilson's offseason and Tyler Algier to the Falcons. So oh, let's make that happen next we got time. Some, we got some things to have. And Tyler, Tyler's in a great spot to go play. If Mike Davis, I think he's going to – I think Tyler starts – Oh, week man. Three. Okay. Woo. okay. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Now that's what we call a tease. All right, Steve. Great to talk All to right. you. We'll do it See again you, soon. Thank you so much.